as that brings out, but the bearing doesn't move at all. Hello everybody and welcome to day 46 of my Jaguar S-Type rebuild series. Uh, first, I want to thank all of you who joined uh, last week's live stream, despite its crappy video and audio. I still don't know uh, how I could get that kind of quality out of really good equipment. So I will give it a second try and complete the disassembly of the replacement engine, including all the measurements uh, to figure out if its block actually is as good as I expect it to be during another live stream on next uh, Saturday, uh, 12th of September at uh, 12 o'clock UTC. It's already a little crowded here, so afterwards I will again have to store away the one or another part. But uh, today it's up to installing the stator bushing that was missing uh, in the first bushing kit. Uh, I hesitated quite some time ordering the Sonics part uh, because uh, delivery costs Taiwan, USA, Europe <laughs> and import fees uh, seemed to make this quite expensive. But uh, then I realized uh, that they only sell this in sets of five. So as long as I don't mess up anything today, four pieces should be left over. If anybody is interested, feel free to contact me uh, via email or in the comments below. It's worth knowing that not all the 6HP26 units are the same regarding the diameter of the input shaft that is riding on this rear stator bushing. They produced smaller ones with a shaft diameter of roughly 26 mm and bigger ones with a diameter of around 30 mm. It's quite easy uh, to mess the numbers up uh, because the outer diameter of the small bushings uh, comes close to 30 mm. So if ordering these, make sure that you measure the shaft size or the inner diameter of the bushing uh, you have removed. In between, uh, my camera froze and the 3 minute file is missing, but uh, I think you believe me if I tell you uh, that I managed uh, to knock down uh, the bushing. This was a little bit harder than before because this, uh, this one is uh, still backed. Uh, to finally get it down, I used uh, this 30 millimeter driver. Yeah, and here it is, perfectly seated. And to prove that it only took me one try, here are the remaining four bushings. You may have recognized that I missed out on the rear portion of the housing when disassembling this unit, uh, so let's now attempt uh, the rear main seal and the two bearings inside here. First the seal, I think this should go out easily. Or not. Yes, and here is the big ball bearing uh, right underneath, held in place uh, by a snap ring. As that brings out, but the bearing doesn't move at all. I ordered uh, this puller uh, to get out uh, the bushings, but actually it was far too big for this purpose. But maybe it works out here. It would fit, but the legs are too long. Get it far enough inside. Around one millimeter is missing here. <laughs> After having turned the unit around, I will now uh, try to knock this uh, bearing out from the inside. A 55 millimeter driver is fitting inside here. No, it's not. Actually, the needle bearing 
on the top is, is smaller than the ball bearing underneath. Let's try this 54. And that's fitting through. Yes, and I think something was moving. a little bit more on top now but still doesn't come out <laughs> let's try out the puller from this position and actually it's coming out of course not any further because these legs have to be moved towards the outside because in this position they actually block the bearing itself. Okay, I guess that's it. <clears throat> now come on. Now it still doesn't want to come out. Okay. Now up to the needle bearing uh, a little further on the inside. This is also held in place by a snap ring. But this snap ring is a strange one. Don't really know how to get this out. And as soon as you apply pressure, it starts spinning. And so we'll try to block the one end while prying the other end towards the inside. That would need three hands here at least. Again, the alloy of the trans housing is getting damaged. There's no way to prevent this. Of course, no chance with slap the snap ring pliers. <clears throat> because this end has this shape. This pry bar is a little too small. So that it can hold back the one side of the snap ring while uh, pulling darts inside the other side. I try to work the little screwdriver behind the snap ring a little from the side now come on beat the shin after having destroyed half of the housing here <laughs> I think I figured out how this works the snap ring is very weak, so it's enough to apply, apply force from the upper side and pry this towards the inside. Of course, it's useful here to remove the oil. Okay. have this picking tool behind the snap ring now. Let's try to work this out all around. Yes, and finally it's out. But of course the bearing is stuck inside, just as the other one was. I will have to knock this out as well. The driver size here is 58 millimeters.
And actually, it was already moving a little bit. Yeah, 59 millimeter is the better size. It's even tighter inside than the other one. Okay. <clears throat> it's already one floor deeper now, but still sticking. Yes, that's it. And here it is. To answer a question recently posted underneath uh, one of my disassembly videos, now I think it's impossible uh, to remove uh, one of these two bearings, especially uh, the inner Ola bearing uh, with the transmission in place from the outside. Obviously, uh, the bearing housings expand over time, and the older the unit gets, uh, the more difficult this would be. Already some time ago, another viewer uh, was dropping a hint. Uh, concerning uh, the towing hook on my car and today there's still some time left so let's give it a try. Not more. And the hint was that this is screwed out towards the right and not towards the left side. That's it again for today. As always, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to join me on my second live stream on next Saturday, September 12th at uh, 12 UTC. I promise you a stunning visual experience and crystal clear sound this time. See you back then. Goodbye.